So I'm here on Friday, December 28th, 2018, alongside Interstate 95 in Colonial Heights, Virginia. And it's raining, and I'm standing across the street from the Keystone Truck and Tractor Museum. Let's see what's inside. There's a well-regarded Sibley and Son barbecue restaurant right here in the museum. So as pointed out earlier, this uh, huge tractor museum is a project of the gentleman who was the former owner of the Abilene Trucking Company and uh, he used part of his wealth to purchase individual tractors and parts of collections or maybe even entire collections from other tractor collectors and assemble them here. I have been to this museum before several years ago I think shortly after they relocated from wherever they were into this building and I took still pictures at that point. I didn't try to do a walkthrough, but today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of this museum just to give you a taste of what it's like. It's definitely a great museum if you like tractors. There's a Shepard SD3. and a 1931 Rumley Model 6 standard. This is a 1949 Gibson H. A 1948 Leader D standard. 1949 Rockway 49G standard. I'm having a little trouble getting far enough away from the tractors to get all of them completely in frame just because of the narrowness of the rows, but I'll do my best. This is a 1937 Huber Model L standard. This is a 1938 Eagle 6B. A 1938 Economy Model A row crop version. And this is a 1948 Silver King R44-42 standard with the screen grill. And this is a 1940 Silver King 440-R38 standard with a cast iron grill and a 1937 Silver King 340 R66 four-cylinder roll crop version. This is a 1963 Ford 4000 wide, a 1959 Ford 951 high crop, a 1954 Fordson major diesel, four cylinder. A 1947 Ford A8N. It's a V8 Ford 60 engine, 8 cylinder. <clears throat> a 
1952 Ford 8N, four-cylinder. A 1962 Ford 801 diesel Powermaster, four-cylinder. This is a 1946 Alice Chalmers WC-4 Speed Patrol. This is a 1948 Wards uh, Model B Standard. And that's somebody's unhappy kid in the distance. This is a 1947 Empire 90 Standard. This is a 1948 Custom Model B. And a 1959 Simpson Jumbo B. And a, a tractor, or it's a small farm all cub, but there's no sign for it. That was the first motorized vehicle I ever operated, was one just like this or nearly identical to it. It's also the one and only vehicle I ever had to hand crank in my entire life to get it started. A 1941 Co-op B2 standard. This is a 1947 Empire 90. This is a 1947 Co-op E3 four-cylinder series. And a 1955 Gambles Farmcrest 30 four-cylinder. And this is the Snappin' Turtle Mower, or the Snapper, yesterday's lawn tractor. This is a 1938 Graham Bradley six-cylinder. And a 1938 Graham Bradley standard six-cylinder gas model. This is model 104. And there's a orchard sprayer. This is the Indian motorcycle tractor. Designed and fabricated in 1951. Um, built entirely from World War II government surplus aircraft cylinders, hydraulic pumps, motors, connections, and fittings. The engine is a military 1942-43 Indian 74 cubic inch flathead twin V model 341 with the standard three-speed Indian hydrostatic transmission. It's a 1918 Case 1018. And this is a 1927 Case 1832. And a 1936 Case Model C four cylinder. 1937 Case CC3 roll crop four cylinder model. 1938 Case RC roll crop four cylinder model. 1951 Case DO Orchard four cylinder. A 1952 Case LA four cylinder. 
1951 Case VAC row crop model, four cylinder. And this is a 1949 Case SC four cylinder. And this guy over to my left, I don't remember it being here the last time I was here. The Hug Road Builder. 1927 Hug Road Builder, 4x2, with a Bud's Kubi 43 HP engine, Model 88 from Highland, Illinois. It's a 1918 Moline Universal Tractor. Looks kind of backwards, doesn't it? And it's a 1938 Minneapolis Moline UDLX. 1937 Minneapolis Moline JT four cylinder. A 1940 Minneapolis Moline RTS standard four cylinder. This guy here is not too dissimilar from the one and only tractor I ever crashed in my youth. 1953 Minneapolis Moline ZBU. The uh, hydraulic system blew apart on it while I was driving it and sprayed me with very hot oil and everything was covered with oil, it became slippery as all sin. And while wrestling with it, trying to keep it under control and not fall off, I ran it into a tree. Uh, 1952 Minneapolis Moline model UTS. 1958 Minneapolis Moline Five Star LPG Wide. And here's a 1959 Case Standard Dual Range Power. And a 1967 Case 831 Custom King. It's a diesel row crop model. I can't get far enough away to get a good angle. This is a 1959 Case 900B. Diesel. And a 1964 Case 831 Diesel row crop version. And this beauty is a 1967 Ford Commander 6000 row crop. This is a 1936 Centaur KV-22. A 1918 Fairbanks Morris and Company Z, six horsepower, 400 RPM, hit and miss stationary engine. And a 1919 Fairbanks Morse hit and miss engine. 1920 economy model D hit and miss 1926 Jaeger machine company hit and miss engine this is a 1972 Oliver 145 lawn tractor De Lavelle cream separator model 514 1973 Alice Chalmers model 620 garden tractor. This is a uh, 1960s um, Cub Cadet. And there's a bunch of Lawn Deer garden tractors. It's a 67 model 110, a 67 Model 60, a 77, Model 100, 1985, Model 111, 1992, Model GX70. Of course, these are all John Deere's. And a 1938, it says through 52. I'm not sure if that's right. Um, or if they mean it's a, oh, it's a scale model. That's the thing. Okay, so somebody's scaled down a larger tractor.
Lots of John Deere's here. We'll get to those in a moment. And these, are, of course, are all beautifully overhauled and repainted. They're all in immaculate condition. I believe they are all completely functional. I don't know if they ever get taken out and run in parades or anything, but uh, they really do a nice job on these. Over here we have an Oliver Model 70 from 1937 and another 37 Oliver Model 70 standard Hart Par. This is an Oliver from 1947, it's a Model 80 standard. And from 1959 it's an Oliver 550 four-cylinder. This is a 1955 Oliver Super 55 and a 1948 Oliver 70 row crop. This is a six cylinder one and a 1949 Oliver 77 row crop model. 1955 Oliver Super 77 six cylinder. And it's a 1955 Oliver Super 77 diesel. 1953 Oliver 88 diesel row crop model. And 1951 Oliver 88 standard six cylinder. And an Oliver model Super 8 Super 99. Detroit diesel three cylinder from 1955. 1957 Oliver Super 44 wide front end. Let's go back down here and hit the farm halls. There's definitely a direction to walk through these aisles if one wants to see the signs, but it's not always the optimum angle to see the sides of the tractors. This is a, a 1948 Farmall Cub, four-cylinder, and a 1960 McCormick Farmall Cub High Crop, four-cylinder. 1954 International Super W4 four cylinder. 1948 McCormick I4 four cylinder. 1949 McCormick O4 Orchard model four cylinder. 1946 Farmall H Roll Crop model four cylinder. 1954 Farmall Super H Row Crop, four cylinder. 1945 Farmall M Row Crop, also a four cylinder. 1949 Farmall M Wide Front, four cylinder. 1954 Farmall W6TA, four cylinder. It's a 1956 Farmall Model 400 row crop, four-cylinder. 
1955 International Harvester LPG W400 standard four cylinder. And down here at the end is the 1961 Farmall 560 row crop gas engine six cylinder. This is a 1917 International Harvester Titan 1020. Almost looks like it should be a steam tractor, but it's gas. Let's go down and run this aisle with the internationals and the... Oh, no problem. Thank you. This is 1936 Alice Chalmers WC Unstyled. Nineteen forty seven Alice Chalmers Model B. Forty seven Alice Chalmers WC styled. Nineteen forty Alice Chalmers Model IB. 1948 Alice Chalmers Model C, 49 Alice Chalmers G wide. Now we're into the Olivers again. It's 1958 Oliver 660, four cylinder. And a 1958 Oliver 880 standard row crop. It says row crop, but it's got the wide front end. I'm not sure about that. Does it say anything about it? Hmm. Wonder if they have the sign in front of the right tractor. It is an 880. A 1964 Oliver 1650 high crop diesel six cylinder. And now we're into the International Harvesters again. 1957 International Harvester standard 650 gas model and this is a 1957 international 650 diesel 1957 international 650 LPG you can see the liquid propane tank up there on our family farm we had a couple of tractors that were retrofitted to be LP, but it wasn't from the factory. 1952 Farmall Super MD Wide. Now there's this Massey Ferguson. It's a uh, Model 97 diesel. I don't see a sign for it. Well, maybe it's this one. 1962. Okay, and it's by the wrong tractor. Maybe I'll take the liberty of moving it. The gal was just cleaning here. Maybe she relocated it. This is a 1967 Massey Ferguson 98 diesel. And this is a 59 Massey model 65 LPG. Got the tank there. This is a 1962 Massey model MF35. Nineteen fifty-five Ferguson TO35. Nineteen fifty-seven Ferguson model F40 row crop version. Here we've got a Massey Harris from 1952. It's a Model 55 diesel. Another Massey Harris, this one from 54. It's a 44 Special Roll Crop version. 1950 Massey Harris Model 30. 
1944 Massey Harris. Uh, through a 101 senior row crop gas engine. Here's a nice green Massey Harris Challenger from 1937. This is a 1932 Massey Harris GP 4x4. So let's see, we've done these, now we're going to go into John Deere land. There's about three rows of John Deere's here, four rows. It's a 1917 Waterloo Boy, Model R, first of the two cylinder series. 1935 John Deere D standard, two cylinder. 1931 John Deere GP, two-cylinder. 1937 John Deere A, two-cylinder. I used to drive one of these. 1936 John Deere AR, also a two-cylinder. People unfamiliar with the two-cylinder models, which were very popular with the John Deere's in that period. They just have two rather large cylinders only a two-cylinder engine, and they run at a quite a low um, RPM. But even though it's two cylinders, they're quite large, they're like coffee cans, and they're all right down in this part of it here. And with a sizable flywheel um, there, instead of you know having an engine that's just going vroom, basically, it's going pop, 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 pop. And if you really load it down, then it's like pop, 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 pop. But not much more than that, so very slow RPM, but still plenty of power. We had a big honker, one of these, I don't remember which model it was on the family farm, that I really got a kick out of driving. Anyway, this is a 1937 John Deere BO, it's also a two-cylinder, as are most of these. 1938 John Deere B, that's the row crop version. This is 1945 John Deere BR. Still a two-cylinder. And a 36 John Deere B wide front end. And um, a 1951 John Deere AWH set up for high crop operation. And what they basically did is they had a what's essentially a standard tractor and then they would put this side gearbox on it that would relocate the axle upwards. You can see right in the middle of the picture there, there's the axle of the wheel, and then up here is the axle of the tractor. So by putting a gearbox in there like that, they could raise the tractor up to a higher level to go over tall crops without crushing them. And then they just had these stilts on the front end to similarly raise the front end. And here's a 1947 John Deere AW, adjustable with wide front. And this is a 1951 John Deere GW. Again, I'm not really sure, but um, this is a 1952 John Deere GH high crop. But if you took the high crop off of this, and just looked at the main tractor. It's just pretty close to the one that I used to drive. Again, I'm not sure the exact year, but it's very similar. A 1952 John Deere R, still a two-cylinder. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> so I'm gonna quick reverse and come down this other side of the aisle. In addition to the tractors, there's a lot of secondary collections here. There's huge collections of beer and pop bottles and 
or mostly these are soda bottles of one kind or another and then model trucks and tractors and you can just sit in rocking chairs and chill out here's a 1950 John Deere M 1950 John Deere MT 1954 John Deere 40 roll crop still a two-cylinder 1954 John Deere 50 roll crop also a two-cylinder not a very big engine in there 1956 John Deere 60 orchard with the gas engine still a two-cylinder and this is a 1955 John Deere 60 standard high seat This is a 1954 John Deere 60 wide front end. John Deere 54, or 1954 John Deere model 70 wide. Still a two cylinder. 1955 John Deere model 70. This is a diesel, but it's still the two cylinder. 1956 John Deere 70 wide and it's an LPG. 1955 John Deere Model 70 LPG version and a 1956 John Deere Model 80 and all of these in this row are two cylinders on both sides going all the way down. There's a couple more stuck in the corner here. This is a 1946 John Deere H also a two-cylinder and then there's a uh, 57 Ford Thunderbird and there's kind of a car shop in here with a couple more I don't know if they really do work on them here or if it's just for show well it looks awfully clean this one's a 1943 John Deere LA it's also a two-cylinder. So now we're getting down to the last John Deere row. Going to walk down to the other end in reverse. Lots and lots of John Deere model tractors there. Well, it's a 1957 John Deere 320. It's also a two cylinder like the other ones we saw. 1958 John Deere 420. This is a wide front end. 1958 John Deere 420 LPG wide. 1957 John Deere 520 LPG wide. 1957 John Deere 620 LPG wide. 1958 John Deere 620 standard. 58 John Deere 620 Orchard 57 John Deere 620 Row Crop LPG 57 John Deere 720 LPG These are still two cylinder machines 1957 John Deere 720 Row Crop LPG 1958 John Deere 820 diesel with the pony motor. I don't really know what that means and it's not explained on the sign.
do a quick walk back and hit the other side of the aisle. All of these are, well most of these are too old for ones that I would have operated except for the one or two that I mentioned earlier. Most of the other tractors I had the occasion to operate on farms were a bit later. They were after the two-cylinder era. So this is a 1959 John Deere 330 standard. And a 1959 John Deere 430. They, call it, they say it's the tricycle. This one's um, offset to the side. So it's not a symmetrical tractor, or at least it's adjusted that way. Um, this is a 1959 John Deere 430, gas-powered high crop version, and a 1960 John Deere 435 diesel with the wide front end, and a 1959 John Deere 530 gas wide. Nineteen fifty nine John Deere six thirty RC LPG two cylinder and again these I think have all been two cylinder models still just due to the era. Nineteen fifty nine John Deere six thirty gas standard configuration. Nineteen fifty nine John Deere seven thirty wide with the diesel engine two cylinders. 1959 John Deere 730 standard diesel pony motor starter. So maybe the pony refers to the starter? I don't know. 1960 John Deere 830 standard diesel. Still a two cylinder plant in there. So that concludes most of the tractors in here. There's still a few along the wall at the Gulf Station. This is a 1954 McCormick Farmall 100 and a 1936 International Harvester C30 4x2. And I don't see a sign on this one but it's weighted down for something. Maybe it's used for tractor pulls or something. Torque amplifier. 1941 Cockshut 70 standard. 1947 Cockshut 30 wide front end. Or maybe the whole thing is wide. It's got the wide rear axle as well. 1959 Cockshut 40. 1956 Cockshut 50 wide pulling tractor. This was essentially the same as the Model 40, but it had increased engine displacement and larger tires. Kind of a brush hog there. And this is a jazzed up drag racer. <laughs> Looks like a drag racer. I guess it's a for pulling competitions. 1966 Alice Chalmers D21 Series 2. Better watch out for the tripping around here. 1958 Oliver 995 Lugomatic. Here's a case with no sign. And a 1975 Blue G1000. And over here, a 1923 Fordson. And it's royal blue paint job. And behind it, a Fordson 1923 Model F. And this is the wall of farm tools.
This is all water nozzles of one kind or another. And here we have snips and cutters and cranks and taps. And um, a lot of these are taps. You know, like you can make your moonshine here. Valves of various sorts, cutting tools, woodworking, hand tools, hammers, scrapers, tongs, lifters, pullers, all sorts of stuff. Traps of all sorts, up into some pretty big ones. Your shovel collection, hacksaws, pikes, hatchets, beam tools as it says. Those are logging tools back there. This looks like a lot of lumbering stuff here. Battery cell testers. A large variety of he heaters with meters on them. Gas cans. There's an old hobby horse up there, or a velocipede. There's even a few old cash registers down here on the floor. And now we can go into the truck museum, which is adjacent to the tractor museum. My friends are around here somewhere. I have to give them a call and see how they're doing. One can hear the heavy rain outside. I'm glad I didn't come in when it was like that. Anyway, so the trucks are really close together, as I remember from my last trip, so it's going to be hard to see much. This is a 1968 Mac R685T 4x2. 1961 Mac, 1961 Mac 4x2 model B67. 1961 Mac B uh, model B61ST 6x4 63 Mac B75 it's a 6x2 and there's a uh, 1959 John Deere 430U up on a flatbed and the truck Offering the flat bed is a 1949 Mac EGU 4x2. And here's a 1947 Ward LaFrance D3 4x2. It's a 1959 Mac G73. Nineteen thirty nine auto car four by four in one sixty seven. Are there even still Mack trucks? I don't recall ever seeing them anymore. Nineteen sixty two Mack F seven thirty seven ST six by four. Although there come to think of it, there is a Mack dealership or repair center near where I live. This is a um, white road tractor, restored to the specifications of a 1948 white tractor, model WC-22T, 1958 Mac, H-63T 4x2. This is another twofer here. There's a car museum back there. We'll visit that as well. This is a um, Irish Fordson. The Fordsons were made in Europe, uh, in the UK especially, as I recall. That's a Model N up there. Hard to see it. This is a 1926 Max or Mac AC Bulldog chain drive. As one can see down there, it's 
it's a 4x2. 1941 Federal Model 25 4x2. 1957 Mac B30 4x2. I think we may have to hit this guy on the way out of this section. This odd duck is a 1957 Diamond T. That's really unusual, isn't it? I wonder if that's to give a better view down or something. Uh, 1974 Brockway K361 TL 6x4. I just can't get any further away than these. My lens won't let me zoom out anymore. 1957 Diamond T 4x2. This guy up here is a, uh, a freight liner. But I don't see a sign for it. And this is a uh, Keystone Truck and Tractor Museum marked 1975 Marmon HDT BC 86, 86 inch cab over. Like a rolling bug smasher. Don't want to be in a front end collision with these puppies. 1966 Diamond T931C. And stuck back there in the corner is a 1953 Kenworth 523 Bullnose 6x4. 1961 International D405 4x2. 1952 Corbett Model D802T 1949 Corbett Model 22TG 4x2 1947 Sterling 4x2 1947 International Harvester KB8 4x2 This is an auto car from 1954, a DC-75, 4x2. 1952, white superpower, 4x2. 1952, white superpower, 4x2. 1961, diamond T-2000. 1950 Diamond T650T. This is a Ford uh, 1950 Ford Model F7 4x2. 1950. This is a 1938 REO with the gasoline engine. 1945 Dodge WH47. Six-cylinder gasoline engine in there. 1947 Dodge WJA55. 1947 Studebaker M16. 1939 GMC COE cab over tanker with a three-cylinder Detroit diesel. And this beautiful machine is a 1957 Kenworth CC925C 6x4. That's what I like to see. And here's a 1957 REO 4x2 model F22. It's a dump truck. So now let's do the inner course of this room. Here's an Obenshane Boyer chemical engine. 
1942 diamond ma uh, diamond T. And this has a tractor on its back. It's a 1949 John Deere MC crawler with the two-cylinder engine. This is a truck set up for logging, so it's got the extra um, beam on there and the trailing uh, truck on the back that can go behind so you can support logs between the front and the rear parts of the truck. 1955 Mac model LTHSW 6x4 with West Coast Stinger or Stinger Steer Log Trailer. This is a 1952 Mac, model LTHSW, 6x4. Nineteen forty-eight GMC diesel six cylinder. And this one's marked with the Abilene Motor Express standard on the door, which of course is the uh, name of the company that the founder of this museum owned. So this is a nineteen forty-eight GMC diesel six cylinder. And uh, this other truck is not signed. Can't tell what it is other than that it's a Kenworth and it's a 6x4. All these guys seem to have brand new tires on them too, which is nice. There doesn't seem to be a lot of signage along this row. There's a Freightliner, 6x4, an Indian motorcycle, no signage, a Whizzer, bicycle fit out with a motorcycle engine, a Cushman Eagle, sort of a factory motorcycle, get around inside the factories, a Cushman Scooter, or Cushman Scooter. Here's a uh, Peterbilt. So far, I think it's the first Peterbilt I've seen in here. It's a 3408. I don't know if that's the model. There's no signage that I can see so far. Here's another Cushman scooter and another. Okay, this is a 1986 Peterbilt 359 6x4. More Cushman scooters. There's a Honda, a Hummer, Harley Davidson Hummer. Another Harley. Becky, did you see the REO speed wagon? No. It's right back there. This big orange guy is a diamond T from 1952. It's a 950 RS. And on its back, it's carrying a 1958 Oliver OC4 crawler and a 1948 Oliver HG60 crawler. And this is a Norman Boswell motorbike collection. That's the whole uh, row of them here, but the signage is at the wrong end. I think it'd help if they put a sign at each end. Um, here's a truck that's set up like a camper. And the sign says, a completely new concept for the sports and vacation minded business or farm operator. The country wagon is unique in that it can be easily converted from a luxurious mobile home to a full use powerful economical truck by installing a flatbed, stake or van body. It's tailor-made for the man who wants a single vehicle which can be used for both pleasure and business. 
The Country Wagon package includes Diamond Rio's Trend truck chassis with a removable 20 foot or 22 foot camper body attached. Hmm. I wonder how practical that would be. So this is a 1969 Diamond Rio model. Okay, we've exhausted the main truck room. Let's go into the to the next one. Work our way back. Last time I was in here, I heard that they were going to be expanding this building so they could open this part of it up, but it obviously hasn't happened yet. Okay, um, this is a 1952 Kenilworth, or Kenworth, 521 Bullnose, with the day cab so it doesn't have the sleeper behind it. A 1973 Chevrolet 90 6x4, Detroit Diesel 318, or 318 horsepower I guess. Nineteen fifty three Mac W seventy first. I don't know what that means. Sixty six by four. Looks like some of these have gone out for competitions or displays based on the placards in their windows. This is a nineteen thirty nine Mac model BM with the uh like a moving van or a utility trailer on it. This is a 1951 GMC four-cylinder diesel and this is a 1940 Dodge model VKDA60 Dodge 331 six-cylinder diesel. It says this is the this is believed to be the only Dodge diesel built with Chrysler's engine in existence. In 1939 to 1957 were built. Oh, gosh, signage is not good. In 1939, 57 were built. In 1940, 130 were built. 1940, 170. A total of 357. This has all the original equipment but they think it's only the only one that still exists. There's a 1950 Freightliner, model 800 double or bubble nose. This big guy is a 1955 International DFC 405. And this one is not signed. It's a tanker with a, looks like a tanker trailer. Besides the single piece assembly. Let's see, is it on a, yes it is. It's on a Boomer Stinger. And um, this is a 1984 Mack Superliner. Very pretty. And now we get into the part that has some cars and small trucks. and some fire engines.
1930 Diamond T602C, 1937 Studebaker, model J30M, 1938 Dodge, model 32 Pickup, 1949 International Harvester KB1, 1950 Ford Model F2, 3 quarter ton, 4 by 2. Um, this one is not signed, it appears. Let's see. This is a 1949 Dodge Power Wagon with the six cylinder gas engine. 1937 Diamond T, Model 80 pickup. 1941 Diamond T 201 panel truck. And this is a uh, ambulance or a, no, this is a, a rescue service. So I guess that's an ambulance. 1957 S120 International 3 quarter ton travel all. And uh, 1925 Thermos Mobile, which is a 1925 model TT Ford chassis. Set up with the Thermos brand. Looks like a uh, parade vehicle. Not cool, quite as cool as a Wiener Mobile, I think. Not all of these are signed, actually, most of them are not. This is an Austin Healy. Uh, 3000 Mark III. This is a Studebaker. 1957. This is an MG. I have a friend who collects and races these. Uh, 1992 Cobra, built by Shelby American. The Ford Mustang, I don't know the year. It's not signed. Ford Bronco. This is a um, what is it, 1965, 1865 to 1965? What does that mean? Centennial Interceptor, it says. 1940 Ford Custom. This is a 1938 Chevrolet half-ton pickup. 1937 Chevrolet Master. This is a 1955 Chevrolet Delivery. 1947 Chevy Convertible. And, uh, I'm sorry. No, it isn't. It is. No, it's a Cadillac. Where's the convertible? They've got some odd signage here. But that's got a Christ or a Cadillac logo on it, not a Chevy, but it is a convertible. So maybe this is the Cadillac DeVille 1967. At least I got the Cadillac part right. Somebody needs to check the signs. I think that cleaning gal I've seen her go around and move signs a little bit. I think she always puts them back. But it may not be her fault. It may be some other stuff going on. 1967 Chevrolet Chevelle. Highly modified, customized. And this guy here. Um, is not signed. Nineteen thirty five Chevrolet Master. Nineteen fifty three Chevrolet CEO customized and restored. 
but which one is it? They're both Chevrolets. Okay, that's the 53 Custom COE, and this is the 1954 Chevrolet 3100 pickup. This is a 1923 Ford Model T American La France fire engine. Colonial Heights, Virginia Chief Engineer. 1935 Ford Fire Chief's car. Reproduction of a chauffeured chief's car used in the 1930s. This fire chief's car was known for its speed, 50 to 60 mile per hour, and low cost, $650. Sanford Model 500 Triple com Combination Pump Chemical and Hose Truck. This is an Aaron's Fox, 1922. And this guy here is a 1934 Ford American Fire Apparatus Pumper. And this is a Pierce from 1924, Pierce Arrow, or the General Manufacturing Company. It's a Seagrave V12, 185 horsepower. And this guy is a um, 1948 Mac EF 4x2 set up for the fire department uh, for floodlights. And this is one of the few unrestored machines here. Nineteen twenty four Maxim model M three with a northern rotary pump. And a 1942 Diamond T404HH. 1947 Virzen FV1 with a one cylinder hot bulb engine. 1954 Landini L25 hot bulb, hot bulb single cylinder semi diesel. The oldest tractor manufacturer in Italy. 1946 Field Marshal Mark I Standard. And a 1936 Lance Bulldog one cylinder hot bulb engine. Nineteen thirty-nine Lance Bulldog one cylinder hot bulb engine again. These are German, by the way, the Lances are uh, German manufacturer. Something I wanted to say about these hot bulb engines is uh, they're semi-diesel. Um, they don't have spark plugs, but they rely on um, heat, not compression, for their ignition. Um, so it's neither a spark nor is it compression. I think it's just residual heat from the previous combustion. I don't know how you get them started, if there's some means to get them warmed up enough to start them. Maybe they have a glow plug or a spark plug for the initial operation. That I do not know. 1936 Twin uh, from Minneapolis Moline, uh, JTO. Here's a uh, sort of before and after picture of this guy. This is a 1955 John Deere 44C Swamp Tracks crawler. It's a two-cylinder engine. Did I get these guys already? 1940 Ford Custom? Yeah, I did. I think I have hit pretty much everything here. Oh, there's a couple more I missed stuck in along the side.
Gotta love the big ass fans. This is a 1919 Day Elder. But there's a chain behind me, I can't get any further away. 1927 Graham Brothers tractor, model EDX, with a chemical tank on it. And a 1926 Graham Brothers model EDX with Garwood dump affixed to it. And then this guy is not signed, but it's a white something or another. Well, unless I discover something else going out that will complete my walkthrough of the Keystone Tractor Museum. I hope you enjoyed. Just another tidbit of information. I opened this video by mentioning that it's in Colonial Heights. It's located um, just on the frontage road on the west side of Interstate I-95 just north of the Appomattox River. So if you were coming north on I-55, you'd get off at the very first exit immediately after crossing the river and cross over to the west side of the interstate and go north on the frontage road. And it's, uh, I don't know, after about four or five buildings. So pretty easy to find. And on the opposite side of the interstate is the area known as South Park nothing to do with the cartoon show. Yeah, there's a lot of hotels and so on on that side, so it's kind of a ho hotel oasis. And there's also a big shopping center there, so it's not exactly a secluded area.